All right, everybody, welcome back to another episode of Cade Gaming. Today, I'm going to be taking a look at Asgard's Fall Origins. This is the free-to-play demo. Asgard's Fall has not come out yet. It is something that's going to be coming out. Very excited for it. Um, and this game plays a lot like Vampire Survivors, which is the wildly successful, almost like bullet hell type game, where you control one character. In this instance, it's more Nordic in nature. You get upgrades and you're attacking just hordes of enemies until they beat you. Um, I want to quickly show you guys the settings because I big plus to this game right off the bat. Uh, they have standard, you know, graphics changes and options and such. You can change your FPS. You can highlight your player, have aim on, all that stuff. And then the skill tree, I'll give you a quick look. They, this is the physical tree. They also have fire and so on and all these other trees that will eventually be available when this game is released, which is really cool. So there's lots of diversity. And then when I click play as well, right, when I click here, when I click play, you can see there are a bunch of maps coming in the full version and difficulty sliders already available. I've played this game for about an hour and a half, two hours so far, and I love it, by the way. Very fun. So go ahead, grab a coffee, and let's try it before you buy it. Uh, this game is slated to be released this year. Uh, I always love supporting indie devs, so I'm grateful to be able to play free demos like this. Um, this, by the way, to play the game, you move around. I use W, S, A, and D. And then the mouse is actually really important in this, right? Where you're highlighted, that's where your character will aim. Uh, every time you level up, my experience bar to give you a lay of the land is down here at the very bottom. So you can see I'm level two. And as I gain those little orbs, it goes up. Uh, from there, you can see my health here at the bottom. You can also see the, the amount of orbs that I've collected, what level I'm on, and so on. Um, so I leveled up, I get to pick a power here. Um, I've used, I've used a lot of these powers. I definitely think there's just a little bit of balancing that needs to be done. Um, and I don't think the cooldown versus the damage always accurately reflects that too. Um, I don't know if I'm interested in placing a rune at my position. I'm going to try a reroll here. Shattered ground. I love this one. It's also a really, it's seemingly strong. So this ability is auto use, right? Just like my regular attack. I'm not clicking or anything. And it goes towards my cursor once the cooldown is off. So in this game, one of the big things you also want to do is dash. Dash will actually give you a moment of invulnerability. Uh, and then every other level, so this is another level up. This is where I can choose carvings for my, my sword hilt here. Um, and the way that it works is I can say, hey, oh, I want this movement speed. I click it and it adds a cost here. Uh, from there, I can choose as many as I want to add based on how many orbs I have. So I can do a quick little re-roll for free, for example, and it re-rolls all of them. But then from there, see, right, okay, maybe I want attack speed instead. And because it's not as rare, it's not as expensive. So I'm gonna take that, and I think that's all for now. I'm just gonna take this. So. I mentioned it earlier, but dashing, you use the space bar to dash and it gives you invulnerability. And then you see your little timer going above your head while it's on cooldown. But it's really convenient because for me, it'll allow you to get around the map just a little bit more. Um, I like Hugin and Moonin. <laughs> I think they're great. Um, they're these two birds that are flying around you and they spawn every so often. They'll stay in play for a bit too. And then the whole point of the game is it just gets progressively harder. Enemies get more and more health. You can see I can take damage like that. You see my health bar at the bottom. Um, occasionally health packs will spawn. They're these beautiful golden apples. Let's see, what do we want here? I want, I'm gonna go more attack speed, honestly. Um, fire damage. I mean, we're not really, why not? Why not? Uh, Pierce chance. And how much is dodge? Hey, we can afford it, let's do it. Okay, so outside of that, I think pluses and minuses to this game, first and foremost, it's really fun. I, as a demo, I am hooked, right? I wanna keep grinding. I love the roguelikes that give me that meta currency, right? That allow me to, after the game, go upgrade a skill tree. Um, I think it's just so much fun 
And then on top of that too, I love it because there's there's like diversity in your abilities. Um, I think there's more customization in that way. The skill trees, of course, while they are small now, will be bigger and they're diverse. I really appreciate that. I think one of the biggest cons is you can see my uh, bar down at the bottom for what skills I have. So, so far I have three skills. And I think, I think maybe one of the downsides is that bar, you can have up to five skills, which I think is great. But once you have all five, you can continue to get new skills. And the pluses and minuses are, maybe you don't like the skill you have, so you can get a new one. But the downside would also be that you're gonna sometimes keep getting new skills over upgrades. And I found I don't get upgrades fast enough. It feels a little like, like I want to deal more damage, you know? Um, this is really good. The dash amount, right? Dash gives me invulnerability. I absolutely want to be taking the dash amount. I'm going to take the critical strike multiplier too. Um, and yeah, I think that's good for now. I'm going to save the rest of my money. See what I can do. And then outside of that, uh, the bottom left is my level. So right now we are at level two difficulty. Uh, essentially the whole point of the game is you're climbing the mountain, right? As you get to new mountain difficulties, I don't leave this map technically, but you'll get to stronger, harder enemies, bosses will show up, elites, you name it. Um, hmm. I'm gonna do Fire Nova, I think. Um. Yeah, I like the idea. You're gonna be surrounded by enemies, of course, during this game, so having a Fire Nova, I think, is gonna help. And then, of course, I'm gonna bounce around in the, little, in the video a little bit as well. I wanna be able to show you guys some of the slightly harder content. That way you can see something maybe a little more exciting. Um, so, so I think my goal is to really be able to, sh to show you diversity in this game. You can see there, world level increased. Now down at the bottom, I'm level, I'm at level three, excuse me. And then to get your experience or what have you at the end so I can upgrade the permanent skill trees, those are scaled off of how much damage you do as well as how many orbs you have. And I believe it's how many orbs you have at the end, by the way, when you die, not how many orbs you gathered. And then finally, what difficulty you got to. So, you know, you get to difficulty 20, you're gonna get more than if you finish at difficulty five, for example. Let's see. I am not excited for these. I'm gonna upgrade Shattering Ground. I really like that ability. I think it's it's tremendously helpful. And one really cool quality of life thing in this game, they actually at the end screen, sh not only show you how much damage you did, but they break it down by skill. So you can see like, hey, here's how my sword is doing versus fire blast versus, you know, broken ground. It's really, it's nice. Uh, I'm gonna reroll this one for sure. Attack speed, gotta take it. Um, bleed, we want bleeds for sure. We probably should take some armor. I think it's probably safe. And I I honestly haven't figured out what Pierce is, so I'm gonna ignore it for now. Cause I think a lot of what I'm relying on in this is is my abilities, you know? All right, I gotta start da dashing. I think one other small improvement maybe is you kind of do, in a game like this, you need a little bit of an invulnerability frame. I found I can take a hit and then almost immediately take another hit. And I'm, I think I do get like a brief invuln, invulnerability period, but it's like, it's so brief. I think it's just too easy for me to go from max to low health. It happens just so tremendously fast. Uh, okay, let's see here. I'm going to take this looks strong. Let's do it. And this is kind of a fire build. So again, this build, I'm gonna actually have to use my cursor a little bit more, you know, cause I have so many abilities going straight towards my cursor. Uh, and again, if you're wondering about healing this game, you can get health regen as a stat. We haven't seen it yet. Oh, here it is, right? And Oh, and a legendary one at that. So, Health regen can heal you over time. And then again, those golden apples you see around the sides are big for me as well. I'm gonna skip the cold damage and chill chance because we have not used or grabbed any cold abilities. A distant shadow lurks in the darkness. Um, there are seemingly random events that happen. Um, stuff like that though, it doesn't 
unless that's just like foreboding that a boss is coming up soon. But there are multiple different kind of phrases it'll say, and sometimes it's like the same. But um, I, nothing appears to happen, so I think it might just be like a quote unquote warning. So let's see. Ooh, yes, decrease ability cooldown for Hugin and Munin. I love this one. This is one of those games where, like, <laughs> as you play, honestly, you honest, you want to play more. Uh, as I level up outside of this, right, as I get the meta currency, it allows me, for example, to increase my damage overall. It allows me to increase my experience gain. And so it makes me like, oh, yeah, just one more run. Let's see how much farther we can get. Let's see how much more damage we can do. Let's try our new abilities. Um, hope that, like... The luck gods, RNG is on our side. <laughs> you name it. Um, let's see. Ooh, yeah, dodge chance and experience did massive fire damage, right? We're building fire and let's take armor. Why not take it all? We're in it for the long haul. Uh, big skill thing, though, in this game is I think dodging is super, super key. I think pressing that space bar, don't be afraid to do it, right? I'm not doing it nearly enough. But it does give you invulnerability, so you can dash through enemies, you can dash through projectiles. All of it is fair game. And so, in that way, there are a lot of ways for you to simply avoid taking damage. So I strongly recommend it. I think at some point, too, you know, right now I have something like four or five dashes, I think. You know, if I have even just, I want to say like seven or eight total dashes, I'm gonna be able to dash indefinitely. And that will just give me lots of invincibility frames, which could be the the counter conversation to me saying, you need a longer invulnerability frame when you, when you take a hit. Definitely want to increase this ability. This is, again, a really strong ability. I've noticed it's been dealing lots of damage for me relative to everything else. It's one of my favorites. Ooh, okay, so we got to level 10. This is our first boss here. Um, and this boss is the only boss I've seen at level 10, at level 20, and so on. Um, he has two hands that float around. The hands themselves hurt you when they bounce down. He hurts you if you touch his face, not his shadow. The one thing that I think is a little confusing to me, I haven't figured out, is his right hand will just go out and drop this circle AoE. But it doesn't seem to hurt me. I don't seem to be able to hurt it, right? Nothing's happening that I can tell. Um, in addition, I've tried having the other hand slam down on enemies, slam down on the boss, slam down on the hand. None of it seems to, like, work, you know? If I do this, for example, bring this over, try and have this drop right here. Like, it doesn't seem to hurt the boss. So I just kind of stick to the head when I can. Now, by the way, rerolls, I think they're great. I think you should always be comfortable using them. I actually have a free reroll because of a skill I got. So that's why the first one's free, the next one costs souls or whatever we're calling them, <laughs> orbs. Um, so I would recommend using them, especially so you can get a build that synergizes, a build that's fun for you, a build that you know will help you make it farther. So make sure you have fun with the game. I think really that's why we all play video games. That's why I'm happy to be here. Um, a game like this to me is also really nice when you want something casual. When you're just looking to chill and hang out, this is something I'm happy to play. It does not require a lot of brain cells. Um, and on top of that too, it's pretty art. I really love the art style. I think it's well done. It feels unique enough. I like the theme. I'm loving the Nordic kind of concept here. I like that there are going to be more Nordic places. I like that you're using different, you know, bosses. Ooh, decrease the ability cooldown by 10%. I like that you're using different, like, gods' abilities too, right? Having all these different people. I don't know them that well. I'm sure there are people out there who will. I don't want to butcher names and stuff, like Fafnir, you know, etc. Overall, though, the game is tremendously fun, really addictive. And this is just the demo. Um, one thing I love about this is definitely an indie dev, and one of the big things they have said in in Steam and everything else is even just wish listing the game helps them. Right? You don't necessarily have to buy it, but 
one of the things that really helps small indie devs on Steam is like, hey, if you instead of instead of the free demo, which you can download and play, if you go to the main game that says it's not released yet, it's called Asgard's Origin or Asgard's Fall, without the origins. If you wishlist the game, it helps them. It gives them an idea on how many people are interested. It, it boosts them in the you know search algorithms too. Uh, not unlike me, by the way, when you like and comment and subscribe, it helps me a bunch. If you share the video, that's all amazing stuff. That all helps me a lot, too. Um, I'm going to take... Oh, I'm going to do a free reroll and see. Yes, Fenrir's Claws. I'm going to upgrade that. The coffee is delicious today. <laughs> my drink of choice. I feel like I've known you long enough. I should probably tell people my drink of choice is typically cold brew. But whenever I travel, I actually try a new coffee shop based on their uh, lattes. I usually will try their espresso. I'll try a latte. I'll try uh, if they have a unique beverage, right? Someone says, hey, yeah, we're making a cardamom maple latte or honey lavender latte or something. I'm always excited to try new things. And so before I even travel anywhere, right? When I go to visit, you know, my mother-in-law, for example, I'm looking up there. Okay, what are the local coffee shops? Where haven't I been before? Um, so I, lo I love to drink a lot of different coffee. Today, it's cold brew, like usual. I love my cold brew. Uh, let's see, attack speed, bleed chip. Yes, we love both of those. Honestly, let's take them and take the dodge. Because uh, I'm getting to the point where the game's getting difficult. I want to start saving some of those orbs so that way I don't have nothing and when I inevitably die. Um, games like this, historically, I don't know if it has an end, quote unquote, to the area. It might, because sometimes the end, there's like a level 30 or level 40, you know, where you get a boss every 10 levels. And at level 30, you know, it might be a unique or a harder boss or something like that. And uh, then you unlock the next area. I don't know if this has it yet. And it also could be because it is the demo. We'll see. But I love the grind. I love the grind in this game. Oops. Oh, taking a hit here. Okay. Incre decrease the ability cooldown. I do love the Hugin and Moonin. Okay. I am very close. I think one hit and I'm going to die here. I'm going to go get my... Ooh, if I can... Yeah, that's right. There we go. That's right. Eat your apples, kids. An apple a day or two keeps the horde of enemies away. One thing I do hope to see in the game, I, I think something I've seen in other games like this, is either new characters or new weapons. The starting weapon for this character is the sword slash that you saw me using at the very beginning. Ooh, boss level. And I think, I think it's not, not at all mandatory, but for example, if you don't like having the sword slash, it might be nice to have something a little different. You know, it might be nice to be able to say, hey, you know, maybe you can get a magical staff. Maybe you can get a bow and arrow, you know, different things. And obviously they'd have to balance it, but, ooh, this is a great one. Oh, look at that. Yes, experience can, oh yeah. Okay, I am here for this. Here we go. Again, I still have not figured out what the purple means. I can't tell. I mean, obviously, if it's obvious, let me know in the comments below, please. If you've noticed maybe enemies are moving faster or something, that is so embarrassing. But please do tell me. I appreciate your comments anyways. I love it when you take the time. It makes me feel so happy. Um, my goal is to bring positivity to the world of online gaming. And I really want to show people that gaming can be fun, it can be social, it can be even calming. So, um, you know, comment below what your thoughts are. Um, forgive me for not mentioning it earlier, but these enemies, you see a few of them from time to time that have the gold bar around their health bar. Those are elite enemies. Those essentially have more health and deal more damage. So you wanna make sure you can kill them when you can and be, be kind of careful of, of them so you don't take a hit. One thing I have found is you don't want to neglect the armor stat. Enemies <laughs> get stronger and stronger for sure. Ooh, this is not bad. We want bleed, attack speed, fire damage. Yes, and we will save the rest of those souls for upgrading afterwards. Ooh, one hit did 125 health, 130 health damage. Be careful, y'all. 
Use those dashes. Use that invulnerability when you can. And it's hard. I have three points, I think, in health regen, so it's not super fast that it comes back. Oh my gosh, so many birds. The chaos. Ooh, elite wave. Okay, so now you can see all the gold bars. There's a ton, an elite wave. This is at tier 25 difficulty right now. You see down there in the bottom. Um, they have so much more health. I wanna be really careful too, because one enemy earlier did 130 damage, so I can only imagine what one of these is gonna do if it hits me here. Also, for those who are playing this game with me, by the way, if ever you are interested, again, it's free to play in the Steam store. I will link it in the description. Don't get discouraged after your first few runs. This is the type of game where like, you're supposed to play and die and play and die. And I, I do think the first couple of runs are, are some of the hardest. And then once you've got your skill upgrades, it becomes easier and easier. And in my opinion, more fun. I love being strong. I love being, you know, able to kill stuff a lot, not having to stress as much about, oh, this, oh, that, you know what I mean? Um, I really, really like it. So please keep at it. Please, please, please. All right, the boss spawned. Ooh, and we leveled up. Okay, let's see here. Increase the ability spawn. Yeah, that's awesome. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. I'm gonna just sit here under the boss, deal as much damage as I can. Uh, he definitely has got a little stronger, a little more health. I don't want to risk taking a hit from the boss. I don't even want to think about how much damage it could do. Here we go. Also, everyone, take a. Oh, well, that's the end. I was gonna say, take a closer look at this purple radius. If it does anything different, let me know. I cannot tell. Maybe it like reduces your defense or something. Uh, okay, um, I have 9,000. I'm gonna take fire damage, dash. Nah, I'm not using all my dashes. I'm gonna take fire damage and health regen and just barely spend anything. Ooh, double dash there. Ooh, great game. <laughs> it's an elite wave as well, so I really, I mean, again, these things, yeah, for that right there did 190 health damage to me. I have to be really careful. Ooh, that's a big group. Yes. Destroyed. Ooh, increase the ability spawn. Yes, I will. How many birds can we get going at once now? <laughs> you can see them stacked on each other too. It cracks me up. Oh my gosh, look at the birds. Okay, don't look too much at the birds. Focus on not dying. There you go, Cade, good job. Ooh, a distant shadow lurks in the darkness. Oop, yep, I should have seen that one coming. Oh man, hey, you know what? That's okay, that was a great run. So here is the damage breakdown screen. So it looks like actually, of course, Fenrir's Claws, this is what we upgraded the most, so that's important. We Second most, we upgraded Hugin and Munin the most, and it didn't deal very much damage at all. It was our least damaging ability after our regular attack. So the breath, is clearly strong. So is Fire Nova. And Shattering Ground, I mean, we took that early. It's decent damage, but clearly the claws being upgraded so much. Those just have such great AoE. I love it. And the breath. Um, but that's the game. Um, here's where it'll show me what I get in terms of stats and bonuses, right? So that gave me a bunch of level ups there. Um, let me know what you thought of the game. You know, if you liked it, please don't forget to like the video and also show this dev your support. Download the demo, wishlist it if you're interested. Um, don't forget to comment if you want to see more content like this. Again, I always appreciate your comments. And finally, if you like seeing my videos, please click that subscribe button. It's quick and easy. Uh, it's totally free to click it, and it actually helps me so much. Uh, my name is Cade. You've been a wonderful audience. I hope you enjoyed your coffee, and happy gaming.